would say that that's also one of the, the greatest tragedies of our economic system is that we teach kids to be dreamers when they're kids, you know, to so think about all the ways that you want to change the world, but then we don't set up a system that enables them to actually pursue that. The only people that get to pursue that are the children of means who have supportive families who are able to enable them to not have to worry about getting a job as soon as they turn 16, uh, worrying about, you know, supporting themselves, supporting their families, and getting stuck in this economic system where they can never actually pursue their dreams. And I started to experience that more and more as as I got inspired by podcasts and, and you know, uh, thinking about the ways that I wanted to get involved in helping to change the world, but being stuck in this situation here in New York where you're constantly hustling to be successful as a creative, and, and this divergence between what you experience in your brain as your dreams and your ideas that you want to make real in the real world, and not being able to act on them is one of the most frustrating things. And the, the, the longer that goes on, the more you can kind of experience despair and, and dissatisfaction with the work that otherwise normally is sustaining you and should be good. But if it's not sustaining your ability to pursue your dreams, it ends up being a huge problem in your life. And so that's why when this pandemic hit, I had just invested in this photo studio to really kind of lean into my business and be able to grow my business so that I could spend less time hustling to make you know ends meet doing all kinds of other jobs and just doing you know the work that inspired me and then pandemic hit and I was paying for both a you know one bedroom apartment and for this photo studio and it was just so obvious to me right away like which one do I get rid of I got rid of my apartment you know yeah. and it was like I need to spend this time in here doing the work that's in my head and materializing that world that I that I that I live in up here man I live in, a, in all the dreams that I have nobody else gets to experience that. And that is the greatest freaking tragedy, man. Cause I don't get to experience it in the real world and share it with other people and they don't get to experience what I have to offer. So yeah. the past year almost now, um, in, in this studio has just been the most fortunate and beautiful time for me as, mm -hmm. as a result of that. You know, I, I, I freaking, I don't know. I should probably shouldn't go into all the details about what it's been like living in here, but let's just say it's been, it's been a fun challenge. I consider, I consider being like an astronaut in the international space station, you know, yeah. if they can, if they can take a, a, a sponge bath, you know, and, and survive up there for a year, I can find a way to live in this place and, and to just foc focus on doing the things that matter and not worrying about, you know, is this the right uh, lifestyle for a 35 year old single man, you know, living in Brooklyn. Cause you describe yeah. that to most people and they look at you like you're a fucking loser. But for me, yeah. this is everything, you know, I'm doing the things that I want to be doing. And when the world comes back, I'll still have the opportunity to pursue all the other things that I love doing as well that, that give you value in, in other people's minds. But like, if I'm not doing this stuff, then none of it, none of it matters, you know? So well, yeah, that's the story behind this place. <laughs> well, let's let's circle that back to your original question a minute ago was about UBI is and, and the tie to what you just said was only people can afford to pursue their dreams are the ones with resources. Yes. Right. And so if you can't pursue so the only people that pursue their dreams can afford to fail. Right. Yes. You no know, reoccurring uh, installments, dividend. Mm -hmm. Our yes. money, our tax money. It's a mm -hmm. tax return every month. Absolutely. You can fail every goddamn month. It's okay. Mm -hmm. It's just like buying stock. You mm. buy 10 losers, you just need one winner. Mm. And you're a winner. Think mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. You're investing in yourself. I might have been wrong 10 months this year, but that one month I was right, baby, we're off and running. You know, like mm -hmm. yeah. it's that kind of thing. You can't if you can't afford to fail, you must not fail. Or yeah. you will be on the goddamn street. You play it safe. High risk, high reward only works for those that can afford to lose this hundred dollars that they're going to invest in Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever the hell of a thing. Right. Like those people continue to win because they can afford to fail a right. hundred times. But there's something about the consistency of it too. And, and being able to rely on that monthly that yep. monthly income, because uh, that's something I experienced, you know, we all experienced so intensely uh, during this pandemic was uh, the unemployment situation. Uh, when it first happened, all of my, all of our work was 1099. We weren't, you know, uh, paying into the unemployment system here in New York City because all, all the jobs for, for creatives, essentially, if you're, if you're a hustling man, you're picking up any extra work you can do and they misclassify you as independent contractors when technically you're not right. really. And so when, when a pandemic first hit and all of our jobs disappeared, all the people I was talking to were like, man, we're screwed. There's going to be no unemployment. Government doesn't give a fuck about us. Like people are moving right. home, moving in with their families, people that had been mostly successful pursuing their dreams as creatives, but hustling, bartending, catering, um, dancing, you know, whatever it was that people needed to do to make ends meet, that all disappeared. And, and it was like, 
you can't go and be like, oh, I have this time now. I'm going to be creative and do fun stuff and like really produce the next stuff. So when the pandemic's over, I can come out of it, you know, ahead of the game. You can't do that when you don't know where, where you're going to get your next check and whether you're going to pay your, be able to pay your bills and be able to eat. As soon as that uh, unemployment kicked in, I started to see the creativity of my friends start to blossom. And then it ends in August, man, and they can't extend it. They can't come to terms. Is it going to be October? Is it going to be November? Is it going to be December? They're going to finally throw us a bone, you know? And it was like, that can be so crushing to people's ability to pursue, to be creative. You cannot be creative if you're constantly worrying about, am I going to be able to survive? You got to get past that survival layer. And then all of a sudden they, they finally pass the stimulus again. It kicks in in January and people are, do, are doing incredible incredible creative stuff again. And that consistency, you can't be stuck in a situation where it's like every three months, the government's going to vote on whether or not you're going to be able to pay your bills. It's like, no man, you got to put something in place that is consistent, that people can rely on. And from there, the blossoming of the highest potential of our society will arise and we will all take advantage of that. Thanks for checking out this clip from our show. To watch more clips or full episodes, click on our profile below. If you want to stay up to date on all of our new episodes and videos, click subscribe. And if you have any ideas for future guests or topics that you would like to see us cover on the show, leave us a message in the comments or connect with us on any of our social media channels at Funtime Program or on our website at FuntimeProgram.com. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.